on your Google Classroom site, you've had five or six questions relating to uh, the Blue White Screen Lab, and I'm going to be here today to try to clarify some of these things for you. So, if you haven't already, those questions need to be in your lab notebook. You can see that the six right here, as well as 13 of you have not completed the paragraph summary about what you're supposed to um, have seen from your lab. So, if you haven't done those, you need to get caught up there. I'm going to go to page um, 5 of your lab handout. You can turn there with me. And the questions that I'm going to answer today are basically the main players in the Blue Light Lab and try to help you understand what the purpose of these are. So here's what we call the PUC A plasmid. P stands for plasmid. U and C could have been initials of somebody. And 8 could be the number for the plasmid that they're recording. 2665 BP stands for 2665 base pairs. That means how many nucleotides the plasma is composed of. So this is double stranded DNA. You got to visualize here. Circular. And on this plasma, you'll see on the outside, all of these abbreviations on the outside are representing restriction enzyme cut sites. So if we, for example, we're going to cut with SCA1, it would cut right here. And if we were to cut with AFL3, it would cut right here. If we did the math and subtracted 2158 from 785, that is how long this piece of DNA would be. Anytime you do any restriction mapping, it needs to add up to what the total plasmid number is, 2665. So, just to give you a quick example of plasmid restriction maps, 2158 minus 785 would be 1373. If we took 1373 from 2665, we know that one cut here would make 1373 base pairs, and the other strand would be 1292. So that's how we do restriction mapping. Now, I want to get to the question of what these genes represent. Number one, ampicillin R means ampicillin resistant. This is a gene that will then code for an mRNA transcript and ultimately make a protein that will allow bacteria that have this plasma to grow on plates that contain ampicillin. Okay, both of your plates that you grew your bacteria on contained ampicillin. Thus, if the E. coli does not have this plasma, the E. coli will die because the ampicillin will kill it. One of the more complicated aspects of this lab is this lac Z, and you see that little apostrophe at the very top? What that means is it's a truncated portion of lac Z. In fact, they call it in your handout that this is the alpha portion of this protein. So this isn't making the full protein. The protein that this lac Z codes for is right up here, beta-galactosidase. This is only making the alpha portion, meaning it's only making part of the protein. The other part is made on the chromosome of the E. coli. So if this plasmid gets into the E. coli cell, this portion of the beta-galactosidase will be made off the plasma. The other portion of the beta-galactosidase will be made from the chromosomal DNA. And then they will combine and make a fully functional beta-galactosidase gene. Now that's important because if you do get this plasma inserted, and again, this doesn't have any other gene in it, just these two, if this plasma is successfully inserted, that beta-galactosidase then will work on what's called X-gal. X-gal, you'll see, is um, an artificial galactoside. What that means is it's a substrate that the enzyme beta-galactosidase can work on. We remember that ASE means enzyme. All this is is just a simple color mechanism. So if you get a fully functional beta-galactosidase, it'll cleave X-gal and it will produce a blue color blue precipitate. So that is what, just showing you that the plasma got inside and that you've got the plasma inside the E. coli. However, that the goal of using this system is then to successfully insert a gene into this what's called MCR, multiple cloning region. And there's numerous um, restriction enzymes here that you can use to insert. But if you insert now right where the lax Z gene is, if you get a gene that inserts in there properly, this lax Z portion, the alpha portion, will not work. It won't function. Thus, 
you won't make a fully functional beta galactosidase. So if you go ahead and cut this and try to insert a gene, you can then be able to see if your gene got in there using the picture on page 7 here. So here's our DNA fragment. We're going to insert that. So we've cut the plasmid right in the middle of the lac Z gene. If this insert gets in there and then we transform, what we're going to end up with is white colony. If we just have the original plasmid that does not have the insert, we're going to get the blue colony. And that is what we call selection. So how do you select and actually know that your gene of interest got into the plasmid? Well, it's a color mechanism. And it's the blue and the white colony. The white colonies show a successful DNA insert. The blue colonies show just a normal re-ligated vector. Now, one last thing to point out about some terms. You know, on page 6, it talks about what is the function of what we call IPTG. IPTG is an inducer. This was added into your auger plate. What IPTG does is it induces, it turns on the gene right here, Laxy. Without it, this gene won't get turned on. So the IPTG, XGAL, beta galactosidase, they're all important parts. You need to understand the function of all of them. And that'll help you answer the rest of the questions.